Hello, everybody. It's Friday and it's one o'clock. So here we are. I hope that you are having a lovely day and I am so excited to have you here. If you would like to pop on the chat and you would like to let me know you're here, that would be wonderful. I'll try to follow along and see if I can find uh, where to, to, to get your comments. And uh, if I don't answer your questions right away, know that it's not because I don't care. It's just because I have trouble doing all the things at once. And I don't have people to help me out with that. So the people who fail well succeed the most. Hmm. That's a quote by me. Look at that. Um, today, I want to consider that. So I just want to start out by telling you a little bit about myself and what I do so that you can decide whether or not you think I'm someone that you can trust to tell you more about this topic. So I am Teresa Peters. I am your language arts mentor and not just a language arts mentor for students in my class. I am your language arts mentor. So if you have questions, if you have concerns about your students' language arts, if you just don't know where to go from here, get in touch with me because I would love to help you out and give you whatever support I can give you. And I mentor grade five to 12 students in language arts and all kinds of language arts skills. I take them by the hand and I work with them on their writing skills, their critical thinking skills, their success mindset skills, so that they can become self-confident, self-disciplined, critical thinkers, persuasive speakers, and writers, and all of those things help them to succeed in life. So today, I just want to start with a quote by John C. Maxwell. He is considered to be the number one leadership authority in the world by many people. And he's a number one New York Times bestselling author with more than 24 million books in 50 different languages. So if that's success, then what he has to say might be important. He says, fail early, fail often, but always fail forward. And that's where I got my fail forward topic from today. So it turns out, however, that fail forward is a marketing genius um, for a business. And actually they've named their business fail forward. So every time someone Googles fail forward, their business, top of the list right there. They are the world's first failure consultancy. Go figure. Failure is a big deal. We all fail. We all have to figure out what to do about it. And we have to teach our students what they can do about it. Language arts is the perfect place to learn how to deal with failure. And there's a few really good reasons for that. So first of all, language arts isn't just one thing. It is a lot of different skills that gets pulled together. It's things that we've learned from the time we are preschool right through wherever we are. And there are far more skills up ahead. I am still learning every day. I teach this. I'm a writing professional and I still keep on learning. There's so much to learn in language arts. So it's not surprising that many students have gaps. They have places where they feel incompetent. And all of those skills have to be put together to create this masterful output. What a perfect opportunity to fail when you have to remember all of the skills that you've learned. And it's a long process. So reading or writing or any of the language arts things that we do, any of the output that we're coming to expect, probably a student struggles with at least one part of it or they hate or dislike at least one other part, or maybe the entire process. So they have to push through some really hard things. They have to do hard things. They have to challenge their fears. They have to challenge their insecurities. And they're going to feel incompetent or maybe dislike the entire process. So language arts is the perfect opportunity for students to learn how to dream big, how to push through and do hard things. So the way I use language arts is to help students dream big. So I ask them, what are your goals in life? Like, where, where do you plan on going? And most of them really don't have a plan. They're not really sure at all. And so they, they don't know where they wanna go. They are kind of afraid to dream, it seems, young people of this generation. And so I help them to set goals, things that they care about. Well then, 
you know, if the best you can come up with is you want to own a red Ferrari, then let's figure out what you need to do that. If you're going to own a, a fancy car, then I think you probably need a good income. Um, you're not going to just want the fancy car. You're going to want the nice clothes. You're going to want the nice house. You're going to want all the things. And very often materialism is the first thing young people think of as success because it's very measurable. It's very easy to assess that. But then I take it back a step and I say, in order to have a job that's going to help you gain all those things at an income level, that's going to allow you to have that life that you're dreaming of. What skills does a successful person have? And so we talk about how they're going to be able to um, do well in an interview, how they're going to be able to answer questions well, how they're going to be able to stand up for what they believe, how they're going to be able to see a problem, find a solution, explain it to their manager, or their boss, get people on board, be able to show that they are thinkers. So all of those things, those are language arts skills. So I bring it back and I teach those students Oh, you want success? Oh, no, no. You want language arts. That's what you want. You want to know how to be persuasive. You want to know how to think critically. You want to know how to make sure you show up and arrive and do the hard thing. Yeah, language arts is going to get you there. Not that math's bad, not that science is bad, but it's the soft skills in language arts that we learn through essay writing, that we learn through public speaking. Those are the skills that really bring life success. Those are the skills that employers are looking for. So as soon as they realize that language arts actually makes a difference, and as soon as they trust that what you give them is not just a waste of time, because no one wants to waste their time, they start to care, at least in some piece of them, or while they're thinking about it, they start to care. So they are able to recognize that this is valuable and important. And you know what? You've seen it. I've seen it. If they really want it, man, young people can do things. It's unbelievable what they can do when they really, really want something. Language arts also teaches something very valuable. It teaches emotional regulation. Now that seems like a big stretch, right? I granted, okay, but I've seen it. I've seen it happen again and again and again in my students. You know, they come to me, the students who are most struggling with writing, it's not writing they're struggling with, not at all. That's what their parents think they're struggling with. Maybe they think that's what they're struggling with too. But what it comes down to is they're afraid. They're afraid of failing. They're afraid of people making fun of them. They're afraid of not measuring up. This is about fear. This is emotional regulation. This is about self-talk. This is about learning how to face something and do something we're really afraid of doing. If that's not a life success skill, I don't know what is. So young people really need to learn how to do those hard things, how to face their fears and look them in the face and say, you know what? Yeah, okay, I feel that way. That's not gonna stop me. I'm gonna make a plan to break it down, to do a small piece at a time, a piece that I can manage right now, a piece that I can do. And then they become more and more confident and they realize, oh, I can do this. This isn't that hard and I can succeed. And when they learn that writing is a process and it's not about the output, it's not about perfection from the get-go. It's about improving from the get-go, just like success mindset. It's about improving me a little bit at a time. It's about improving my choices and my decisions a little bit at a time. It's exactly the same in writing. It's the writing process. We start by brainstorming. Same as we do with dreaming. We start by working through what our goals or our outline, our plan is going to be. And we work through the process for how to improve that and then tweak it a little bit more and improve it and tweak it a little bit more and improve it. We throw some words on the page and we have to deal with the fear that, oh no, these words might not be good enough. That's okay. We fix them after. It's no problem. We put it on the page. It's not failure that it's not perfect. Wow. If some of us could learn as adults that it's not failure not to be perfect, imagine what we could teach our kids. So through self-talk, through planning, through time management, through um, anxiety management techniques that I have experience with, I have been able to help so many students be able to face down those fears and to be able to change the way they look at things, to change the way they look at failure. So as parents, 
we are the best example to our kids. How are we doing? How are we doing with failure? How are we doing on those hard days when things just feel like they're falling apart? I know they happen. I know they do. I have those days too. I have them regularly. You have them regularly. Maybe you have days when your young person is struggling. They are fighting you. They're arguing. They're melting down. They're crying. They're refusing to write. They're refusing to do their math. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter what subject. Those things are not just one thing. It's not just rebellion. It's not, you know, we can't just label it one thing. We're complex people. And you and I were complex people. How are you doing? How are you doing failing? How are you failing forward? How are you planning for success for five minutes from now when right this minute, everything's falling apart? How are you planning for half an hour from now when right now you just lost it? We can be real. Who hasn't? I don't know. Maybe you haven't. If you haven't lost it, you're probably in the wrong group. Okay. No, I'm pretty real here. It, my house is an emotional place and we talk and we share and we argue and we disagree and we deal with things. And that's so important. So important. And how are you dealing with failure? What's your next plan to succeed? How are you going to change now? How are you going to follow through and make a difference? How are you going to be an example to your student? So do you want to know how I do it? Do you want to know? what I do to make a difference in your student's life in 12 weeks. 12 weeks, no, I'm serious. 12 weeks makes a difference. In 12 weeks, they begin writing confidently. They begin seeing that they can make a difference in their life. 12 weeks, three months. Yeah, I know, it seems impossible, but I've seen it again and again and again. And I want to invite you, if you want to know how to do this, how I do this, how you can do this, how I can do this for you if you need help. Please join an upcoming webinar. There is a link right here with your video. There are two in November, two in December. There will be more added as time goes by and as there is need. Um, this is the 12 Weeks to Writing Confidence webinar. So what if you can't wait till November? No, man, I need to know now. I don't want to wait till November. I want to know now. I'm so excited. Okay, please go download my e-guide. If you have a few minutes to read it, it's not super long. It's going to explain to you why language arts matters, even though your student probably won't write an essay after they graduate their schooling. Why does language arts matter? And what difference is it going to make? And how you can use my process in your own homeschool. You can go to tutor.discerntolearn.com and the link will be right here as well. And you can download my ebook there. But what if you've done that? What if you've already been, you know, you, you've already been around and you've been listening and you're thinking, man, I want to know more about this. I want to offer you a free student assessment. So you just book a call with me. There's a link there for my calendar. You send in a piece of writing. You have your student do um, an online uh, reading comprehension assessment. And I'm going to get together with you and just talk to you just, you know, casually. What are your students' needs? What are your concerns? We're going to look at the student assessment and we're going to see how they can be helped, what difference it can make for them. And we're going to go through the method that I use and how that will work for them. Um, you might um, check out and see, you know, is discern to learn for you? You know, maybe, maybe it's not. Okay, very honestly, I'm not a salesperson. That's not my gig. If I was a salesperson, I'd be in sales. I'm a mentor. What I really want to do is I want to mentor students and I want to come alongside them and I want to help them. I'm not going to take your student in my class if I don't think I can help them. If I don't think in 12 weeks I can change their success trajectory, this is the wrong class. So I'm going to be honest with you, and we're going to just talk a little bit about what the options are and maybe some other options for your students if Discern to Learn is not for you. If you want to learn more, if you want to get that assessment, if you want to talk to me about whether or not Discern to Learn is for you or how you can make a plan for yourself using my method, um, I would love to like lay that method out for you just like it is in my ebook, 
but specifically for your student. So please do go ahead, book a call with me, and I will be more than happy to sit down and talk to you. I hope you have a lovely day. Thank you so much for joining me today. And parents, this is the time to fail forward. Don't be afraid of failure. Be afraid of not succeeding. I've got your back. Talk to you soon.